Hi everyone, for today's lesson we'll be learning about sharing money. You're going to want to have a scratch piece of paper or a whiteboard and a marker along with your math journal. Let's get started with three problems that are number stories for you to solve. Let's look at the first one. There are 36 children in the class. They sit in rows of four. How many rows are there? So we're starting with 36 children. We're dividing them into four rows of four. So 36 divided by four, or what number times four equals 36? Your answer should be nine in their unit rows. For the second one, we have eight children share 72 pennies equally. So we know that we have a total of 74 pennies and we need, or 72 pennies and we need to share those between eight children equally. How many pennies does each child get? And the answer would be nine because nine times eight is 72. So nine pennies. And the last one, three children share 28 strawberries equally. So we have 28 strawberries and we have three children. And it says, how many strawberries does each child get? So when I'm doing this one, I try to think of what times three is 28. And when I'm going through my head, I can't think of a number that would, um, a factor that goes with it to get to 28. I can think of the fact that 9 times 3 equals 27. So that would mean I would have 9 strawberries for each child. And then there would be 1 left over. Which, because it's a strawberry, you would be allowed to cut that apart. So you could say 9 and 1 third strawberries. Either one of those answers would be acceptable. For our math message today, we're going to be talking about how four friends have six $10 bills and they need to share them equally. How much money will each friend get? So we have $10 bills and $1 bills to act out the problem. And then we have some pictures of some friends right here. Remember, you can trade for smaller bills. You only have $10 bills and $1 bills that you have access to. So you could take a $10 bill right here and you could trade it for 10 $1 bills. That would be a possibility. Go ahead and push pause and I would like, I would to, like see to see you work on this problem um, right now. And then we'll talk about it as soon as you're done working on it. Go ahead and push pause. All right, this is how far I got when I did it initially. I knew that I had six $10 bills, and I knew that that meant that each one of the friends could have one of those $10 bills. But then I wasn't sure what to do with these leftover $10 bills. So I started to kind of think about how much money do I have there? And I knew that I had a total of $20. I knew I still needed to share that $20 between my four friends. So I was thinking 20 divided by four equals what? Or what number times four gets me to 20? So how much money would each of these people get? Well, when I did that, I found out that 5 times 4 equals 20. So then I knew that each person would get an additional $5 from these $10 bills. And they would get those in the form of $1 bills. So I would take this first $10 bill, cross it off, change it to $1 bills. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I do the same thing with the other one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So when I look at the total amount that each friend gets, I see that each friend gets 
a total of $15. Great job. We're going to go ahead and open up our math journals to page 266. And we're going to be um, working together. I know it says work with a partner. I am your partner today. And we're going to work on this together. And normally I would give you an envelope and it would have $10 bills and $1 bills for us to use. But if you don't have any of those, because obviously I haven't given them to you, you are welcome to use like Monopoly Junior money or make up your own fake money or anything like that. Um, we'll do the best that we can. And um, we have $10 bills and $1 bills. Keep that in mind. For number one, if $54 is shared equally by three people, how much does each person get? All right, when I would set this problem up, I would be thinking about $54 and how that's going to be shared between three people. And we want to know how much money are they going to get. So we need to come up with a variable that goes here, or a letter, and we're going to say D, and that D stands for the number of dollars each person gets. So I'm going to put that right here for you. Um, i got to make it smaller. Sorry about that. Number of dollars each person gets. down so that you can copy that number of dollars each person gets and then if I am writing that as a number model with the letter I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that right there $54 divided by 3 because 3 people equals D the number of dollars each person gets now when I draw this out I really like to kind of draw a box for each person. Um, and so we have three people, so we're going to draw three boxes. Then I kind of like to go back to that number of uh, dollars that I have. And I know I have $54. So I kind of like to say, okay, well, first I'm going to draw the $10 bills. So I know I have one $10 bill there, and one $10 bill there, and one $10 bill there. And the way that I can show that it's a $10 bill is by writing a 10 on there. And then I kind of say, okay, well, I still have $10 bills. How much do I still have? And I like to kind of put them over here as placeholders. And so I'm going to put my 10 here and my 10 here. Now, that together is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So there's my 50. And now I'm going to kind of divide up my ones. So I have four one dollar bills so I'm gonna divide that up here a one dollar bill a one dollar bill and a one dollar bill now that's not four one dollar bills that's three so I have one one dollar bill left so when I put that all together when I put my leftovers that didn't easily go there I have a total of 10 plus 10 that's 20 plus one so what I like to do is I like to think, okay, now I have $21. Now I'm dividing $21 between three people. How much money would each of those people get? Now remember, you can put the $10 bills into $1 bills. So $21 divided by three people. Well, I know that three times seven gets me to 21. So that means that... In here, in for each person, they're going to have $1 bill plus another seven $1 bills. So they're going to have a total of eight $1 bills. So $1 bills times eight is going to be a total of $8. And we're going to do that in each of them. And when you add that together, you get a total of $10 plus $8 would be $18. So 18 
dollars stands for letter D. And so what we'll do is to check our work, we could say, well, what's 18 times 3? Does that equal 54? And you have 18 plus 18, and then you can add an additional 18 to check your work. For number 2, we're going to do this in a similar way. It says if $68 is shared equally by four people, how much does each person get? And so um, the letter, again, can be the letter um, D for dollars. And then we're going to do the same thing that we wrote up above. I'm going to see if I can just kind of slide that down here. And we're going, oh, no, I can't. Um, so what we're going to do is I will type it again for you. So D stands for the number of dollars each person gets. And we know that this time we have $68. And we want to divide it between four people. And our answer is going to be that letter D number of dollars each person gets. So this time I'm going to draw four rectangles because I'm sharing with four people this time. And don't forget, I still have only $10 bills and $1 bills. So if I look over here first in the tens place, I have six, so I have 60. So I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and I'm going to show that they're $10 bills by putting a 10 inside each of them. Nothing super fancy here. And then I know that I have eight $1 bills. So I'm going to change my color so we can see the difference here. Um, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Okay, I used four. I still have more because I have eight. I'm going to keep going. Five, six, seven, eight. And we know each of those are one dollar bill. And I have no leftover money here. So I know that my leftover money up here for tens is a total of twenty dollars. And I have twenty dollars to share between a total of four people. So $20 divided by 4 people, or what times 4 equals 20, is going to help me figure out that they each need to have 5 additional dollars. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to think, okay, I'm going to take this 5 and I'm going to put it in here. So that means that I have 5 one single ones, six, seven. So what I need to do is I need to label mine with the fact that everyone is getting a total of seven one dollar bills. And if you have seven one dollar bills, that equals seven dollars. And seven dollars plus ten dollars is going to give you a total of $17. So if you have 17 times 4, you should get 68. Because 68 divided by 4 should be $17. Alright, you have two more problems here. And I'm going to have you do these two problems on your own. There's a lot less work that you have to show on this paper. And I want you to give those a try. Um, do them on scratch paper and then write in the answer there. And then um, these ones in the try this section, I'm going to say that you can go ahead and you may skip those today because you worked super hard on the ones above. Let's go on to our next page. Um, you can go ahead and push pause while you finish up number three and four. And then join me with page um, 267. So, here we go. Number one, shade three of the circles. What fraction of the circles is not shaded? Fill in the circle. That means there's going to be one circle you fill in next to the correct answer. Lou's Pizza Restaurant wants to bake a record breaking pizza with a perimeter 
greater than 456 feet. Many cooks make to work together to bake this pizza. Will this pizza break the record? This is a huge pizza. Now the thing we have to remember is what does perimeter mean? I'll give you a reminder about perimeter. Perimeter is like the fence around the yard, okay? So if we are have this, um, these measurements, will the pizza break the record? Will it have a perimeter greater than 456 feet? And then you're going to put yes or no, and then perimeter along with the unit here. Number three, write the whole number that is equivalent to each fraction. You may use your fraction tools. So if we have three over one whole, that means that's going to be three as a whole number. And then two over two, that's going to be one. And I'm going to let you guys take a stab at the next two on your own. Number four, insert parentheses to make the number sentence true. So for the first one, we have to get zero as our answer. So we have 160, take away 80, and then multiply it by 2. But I feel like if we do it that way, it's just going to get um, even bigger. So let's try this. What if we put parentheses around 80 times 2? 80 times 2 is 160. So 160 minus 160, that would be 0. Go ahead and put the parentheses on the next one. For number five, fill in the rule and the missing numbers. We have to look to see, are our numbers getting bigger? Are they getting bigger in a regular fashion? So it could be addition, because they're getting bigger. It could be multiplication. Don't forget on this last one, you need to do um, something on your own. And when I look at these, I see one becomes six, and then six becomes 36, so I'm going to say that my rule is times 6. So 2 times 6 would be 12. What times 6 is going to get me to 30? And go ahead and fill in the rest of them there too. Name at least one fraction that is greater than 1 half, but it's less than 4. Sorry, let me say that again. Name at least one fraction that is greater than 1 fourth, and less than four fourths. And then you can go ahead and you can show on a number line, fraction strip or fraction circle, that your answer is true. Let's go over your home link for tonight. All right, it says four friends share $76. They have seven one $10 bills and six $1 bills, just like what we were working with before they can go to the bank to get smaller bills. So we're gonna come up with a letter that represents, what is it representing? Hint, hint, go back and look in your math journal. We just did problems like this. And then go ahead and put the number model with a letter. I would go ahead and um, show pictures of how you solve the problem. I'll get you started. I would do the four uh, rectangles here because the four rectangles are going to help remind you of the fact that you're sharing with four friends. And then you tell me how much each person gets. And then you can do these two down here as well. And then it says, without calculating, explain how you know that $90 divided by 5 would be larger than $90 divided by 6. Think about sharing $90 between five friends or sharing $90 between six friends. Which way would you get more money? Go ahead and work on this. Make sure that you upload this when you are finished to Google Classroom. Great job today.